What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com. Let's talk about some peptides. A Lamy Pretide, otherwise known as SS31. I'm going to mispronounce the hell out of everything because, well, I read things. I don't watch a lot of videos. So I don't know the proper pronunciation for everything. People always call me off on it, out on it. I can't even speak today. What well, is a federal holiday? So um, I guess that's just what's, what it's going to be. So what does this thing do? Well, theoretically, it's a mitochondrial peptide. Not theoretically. It's actually probably one of those proven peptides you've never heard of. Targets energy, aging, and cellular resistance because it works for the mitochondria. What is a mitochondria? It's the powerhouse of your cell. But the true importance of mitochondria are far more than ATP production. It controls oxidative stress, metabolic efficiency, cellular signaling, apopto apoptosis, told you I can't speak, and the body's ability to adapt to stress. When mitochondrial function declines, performance drops, recovery slows, and long-term health erodes. As you age, you have something when you're young, you're like 20s. You have like 9,000 trillion mitochondria lit up. As you get older, the mitochondria starts to fade. They start to dim. Think about mitochondria as light bulbs. Oh, the light bulbs are on. There's 9,000 trillion light bulbs in this room. And then they start to dim and dim and dim. Things like GoBHB and SS31 help turn the lights back on. So the room is bright and shining. So this stands out among these experimental peptides. Again, talk to your doctor because it does not attempt to force energy production. It targets the root of the problem by improving the efficiency and structural integrity of the mitochondria. It stops stimulation. Like we say with the GoBHB, cellular energy versus stimulant energy. You're, but this, rather than just giving your, your mitochondria more ATP, more stuff to work with. This actually helps build its infrastructure. So it's a synthetic tetrapeptide designed to selectively accumulate inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Unlike most peptides, antioxidants, and metabolic compounds that distribute broadly throughout the body, SS31 is specifically drawn to cardiolipin. Cardiolipin is a critical phospholipid that anchors and stabilizes the protein of the electron transport chain. When this becomes damaged or oxidized, mitochondrial efficiency collapses. Electron leakage increases. Reactive oxygen species rise. And ATP production, well, it becomes inefficient. So what does SS31 does? It binds to these cardiolipin, to this cardiolipin, and stabilizes it. By protecting this structural component, it allows mitochondria to function as designed, producing energy with less oxidative stress and less collateral damage. So it behaves differently from traditional antioxidants. It doesn't clean up oxidative stress after the fact. It reduces its creation in the first place. It's preventing it from being built, basically. Um, like viral replication, like when you take something like quercetin and the zinc and vitamin C and stuff permeates the membrane, permeates the cell. So you have something that provides viral, prevents viral replication, right? That's the whole theory on those, those used during COVID at the time. So think about it as preventative rather than just, it's preventing a fire rather than extinguishing it after the fact. So SS31 inside the mitochondria influences energy production through multiple interconnected mechanisms. This is what's fascinating about these peptides, man. I learn new things every day. Um, so it's, it, um, okay. So it stabilizes cardiolipin, preserves the structural organiz organization of the transport chain. This improves electron flow and reduces electron leak. And that's the primary source of these reactive oxygen species. So by lowering oxidative stress at its source, SS31 helps protect mitochondrial membranes, protein, and mitochondrial DNA from cumulative damage. Over time, this preservation translates into more efficient ATP production, especially under conditions of metabolic stress such as aging, 
caloric restriction. So if you're dieting, this could be extremely important and intense training or illness. The result is not a surge of artificial energy like this caffeine containing energy drink, which I love. I say, why not do both? Stimulate both the cells and your body, right? Improved energy efficiency and cellular resilience. So mitochondrial health is one of the designing features of aging. If your mitochondria gets dysfunctional, that's what causes a lot of the things that cause you to age. Associated with fatigue, insulin resistance, poor exercise tolerance, neurodegeneration, cardiovascular decline, and impaired recovery. High energy tissues like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and neurons are especially vulnerable to this mitochondrial inefficiency. Mitochondria underperform the body compensates by increasing stress hormones, inflammation, which by the way, inflammation is Satan, and reliance on inefficient metabolic pathways. SS31 intervenes upstream in this process. So instead of chasing symptoms, you're supporting symptoms that prevent this all from happening in the first place. So the thing about SS31 is it's been studied extensively in preclinical models, early human clinical trials, primarily in mitochondrial disease, cardiovascular injury, ischemia, hyper, re, re, reperfusion injury, and age-related decline. So animal studies consistently demonstrate improved mitochondrial respiration, reduced oxidative damage, increased endurance capacity, and enhanced tissue resilience. Human trials in mitochondrial myopathies and heart failure show improvements in mitochondrial biomarkers and functional measures even when conventional antioxidants theories fail to produce benefits. So again, not a stimulant. It's subtle, cumulative, and related to efficiency rather than just forced output. So... This is not a dietary supplement. It's an inv investigational compound studying under controlled research. Talk to your doctor. I'm going to give you a site that I trust, a couple sites that I trust at the end of this video. And you can, uh, those are ones that I use. But again, if there's a peptide site that you trust, go to that. But I'm oh, coupon codes for all the research sites for me are Lobliner for the two I'm going to mention, L-O-B-L-I-N-E-R. Um, I'm just giving you two sites. I don't get paid by them just because the first question asked when I do a video is, um, yeah, where do I buy this? Then I'm like, well, go here. I'd rather just nip it in the bud here. I'm not allowed to link them on the description in YouTube because they have taken down channels for doing that. How do you do this? Um, it, it, it's an injection, subcutaneous. Uh, some are intravenous. I wouldn't recommend that. Oral use is not effective because the peptides degrade in your digestive tract. Uh, protocols involve repeated administration over defined periods. The goal is mitochondrial preservation and adaptation, no acute performance enhancement, um, not designed for immediate feedback for long term. So you're not going to take this, be like, holy shit, it's something you take over time. Here's the thing. There's no, there's no approved dosing protocol. We're guessing at this point. Now, I'm going to bring up the, uh, the site I use. This is nextgenpeptides. Dot shop N E X G E N peptides P E P T I D E S dot shop and also peptidepro.io P E P T I D E P R O.io. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to go ahead and show you next gen. So it comes in 10 milligrams. And the dosing, again, these are for crazy clinical based trials. So we're going to do our best to mitigate the dosing and what's affordable, right? And also realize the buildup effect. So here's the thing. 40 milligrams a day is what some of these studies are using. Um, that's a lot. Animal studies often use higher relative doses. But they don't directly translate to humans. So it accumulates over time. So what I'm gonna recommend, it's crazy low, 500 micrograms a day. Okay, 10 milligrams, that's 20 shots. Okay, put that in perspective. Or if you want one milligram a day, that's 10 days. I think you're going to get results from either of those. Again, consult with your doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm an idiot. I'm personally doing one milligram a day. But again, it's a buildup effect. And again, these are clinical things that are, uh, I'm assuming you're not trying to do anything for your cardiovascular tissue. You're just trying to be better, feel better, look better, all that good stuff. <clears throat> so it's generally well-tolerated, mild injection site reactions. That's true with any peptide. 
Um, Long-term safety is limited. So again, consult with your doctor. Since it influences mitochondrial function, it is not treated casually or stacked indiscriminately. Um, Again, like anything, not a shortcut. doesn't replace nutrition, training, um, any other things that help keep you healthy. So traditional antioxidants attempt to neutralize reactive oxygen species after they're produced. This works upstream. It improves electron, electron transport chain efficiency, reduces excessive production of reaction oxygen species in the first place, and prevents all the damage from happening. Now, we don't want to stack indiscriminately, but there is something safe, effective on kids, every, every population, not saying kids should not take this. I'm not going to say that. Nope, nope. This is for use of adults under doctor supervision is going to be go bhb and i'm going to tell you why now i promote go bhb a lot because it's the greatest thing ever created if you go to tigerfitness.com that's tigerfitness.com coupon code lowbliner mts nutrition has a great go bhb and clean form nutrition has a great go bhb they're the exact same thing exact same thing so if you love mts buy that if you love clean form buy that don't care they're both awesome right so here's why they work well together SS31, I've alluded to this in the past in this video, improves the efficiency of the mitochondrial machinery. GoBHB is a clean fuel source for the mitochondria to readily use. It provides your body with direct ATP. 225% more energy than glucose. That's a lot. So they work at different but complementary levels of energy metabolism. SS31 enhances mitochondrial structure and efficiency. GoBHB supplies beta-hydroxybutyrate which is a ketone the body produces far more ATP um, per unit of oxygen and glucose and generates fewer reactive oxygen species during oxidation. How much would I take of the GoBHB? Um, I would take 10 to 20 grams a day, five, grams pre, five to 10 grams pre-workout, five grams two more times throughout the day. So when this happens, mitochondrial efficiency improves and then the, the value of this clean burning fuel increases. Go BHP is exactly what you need. It's the only thing that does that. And it reduces reliance on glycolysis and stabilizes your energy output. You'll be feeling good throughout the day, theoretically. Not about stimulation. It's about efficiency and just feeling good all day. Um, the anti-tired molecule. That's what Go BHP is. So SS31 improves the engine. Go BHP is like high octane fuel. That's why the combination makes sense for performance, recovery, and metabolic resilience rather than short-term energy spikes like I get from these energy drinks. I do it all. I like feeling great. I love my ghost energy drinks. I'm not going to stop using them. I alternate one-to-one -one with Rev7. I also have a shaker cup full of hydroglyph and go BHB I drink throughout the day. So here's the deal. Bottom line, SS31 is, it, it, and, and go BHB too, it's a shift in how we think about energy recovery and aging. We're not forcing output. We're not forcing it. That causes damage. We're supporting the cellular infrastructure that makes output possible. By stabilizing cardiolipin and improving mitochondrial efficiency, SS31 targets one of the foundational causes of metabolic age, metabolic and age-related decline. So again, combine that with BHB and they work well together. But again, guys, I will restate, nothing works unless you do. I will say that peptides for even the inactive crowd, um, like BPC-157, TB-500, things like that will benefit. Theoretically, research chemicals only. Talk to your doctors. Um, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Don't call my lawyer. Um, this is just me talking about my experience and what I'm currently doing. So I've thrown SS-31 in. I'm stacking with something called MOTS-C which is fantastic. I, I'll do a video on that as well. I did a little overview of what I'm taking this year, and that was one of them. I'm really excited about this peptide. And again, I'm going to bring it up one more again. That is nextgenpeptides.shop, N-E-X-G-E-N-P-E-P-T-I-D-E-S.shop. And also here's the other one, peptidepro.io. I think I'm 21. Let's, let's go through this. Come on. Okay. So home. There we go. And here's the other one. All right. Those are the two sites. Yeah. That's all I got. Anyway, guys, again, go BHB at tigerfitness.com. Kuma Kadmaha. I mentioned all the peptide sites. Look, man, peptides are the future. And we're living in the future. We've talked about Red at True Tide and the success. I had to stop taking it because even at the micro dose, 
I was having trouble gaining weight, trying to gain weight. That's how awesome it is. My wife has seen phenomenal results in health and her, her weight, she's probably dropped 30 pounds. She looks amazing. I love seeing her naked. I love seeing her naked before, but I, I, I got to admit, seeing her naked now is really fun. Um, but yeah, that's baptized with the future. And if you don't embrace, and I was anti Oz, I'm still anti Ozempic. Here's the deal. Ozempic's like getting a Model T and thinking you have the best car on the road. Yeah, it's cool because it's old, but it's not the best car. I, I, I told, I think I said this in another video. Like I, I want a reliable car that doesn't depreciate. Um, and I bought a new Forerunner. Have you looked at the depreciation on those? Right. Like I'm about like, but, but like, there's this cool, like I'm bringing it up because like I had a 2021 Yukon that was falling apart. I had to sell it. Right. Paid off, ready to go. Right. So I don't, I don't carry car payments. I, don't, I hate debt. I'm anti-debt, but anyway, so I get this Forerunner and I went from having this cool little screen that had like the maps and stuff. And now the screen on the Forerunner, like where your maps and shit are, it's like, it's like a big screen TV. And I got all these new buttons and doohickeys and I got the off-road version. So I got all these buttons for that. And that is, that is Reta True Tide. Reta True Tide is a Tesla and Ozempic is a Model T. Okay. Um, that, no. I'm, or, or if you're not in electric cars, I'm not in electric cars. I got a hybrid. It's really cool. I'm really excited about it. It's getting the uh, ceramic and the PPF coating on it right now. I can't wait to have it back. But um, man, I'm excited about it. But think about it this way. Peptides are the future. It's all the bells and whistles and it works better and it lasts longer. And it's really fucking cool. Really cool. It's the, it's the health equivalent of a Toyota 4Runner. Big fan of my new car. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on notification bell. And of course, remember being the healthiest you possible by using modern technology. That's not a game.